Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I don't like this. Oh, no. Oh, no, what's that noise? Oh, we're going up. Oh, we are going up. Oh, dear, this isn't good. Um, hello? Nayrid and Kathy presents. What are they presenting? Me escapist. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, I've arrived. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another 100 day video. In this video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days inside of a giant maze. But don't be fooled. This maze isn't your average normal maze. This maze has eight different exit points. And with every single exit point, comes a new challenge. In each exit point, there are custom mobs, custom bosses, and it is my goal to take them down and defeat them. Will I be able to beat the maze? Watch to the end to find out. Guys, before this video starts, we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. So if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button down below, and hey, take this diamond as a thank you. So without further ado, Let's get in to the video. So I had arrived on the first day, not knowing where I was or what my first move was going to be. The first thing I thought was that I needed shelter before night. I grabbed the basic resources you needed like wood and then started to explore the area I found myself in. I advanced to stone tools so I could equip stronger weapons. And I made sure I gathered enough wood so I could survive the night without going out of shelter. Exploring further into the center, there was a broken down shelter with a chest. And inside this chest, there was a log book with some beds and compasses. Inside of the log book, there was text from someone who was previously here trapped in the maze. Although this log book was helpful, it gave me insight on how the maze actually works. And what I found out from the logbook was interesting. Every single new day, the layout of the maze changes. So with that information, I knew this task wasn't going to be easy. Since this shelter was already built, I was going to use that to my advantage. I was going to remake this shelter into a nice home. And while gathering the resources for my new house, I found this strange ladder that went down into a basement. There were a few chests down here that contained some free loot, like free iron, free torches, and free coal. And while exploring, I found this long tunnel that led to 16 pieces of colored glass. Which meant to each exit of the maze, there was going to be a piece of wool that I would need to try and collect. And there was also a railway system down here, but I'll get into that later. While getting back to my shelter, it reached night. And that's when I noticed that the gates were closing. So just like in the movies The Maze Runner, in the night the gates do close to keep me safe. Which is very cool. Thanks Maze. And as morning came, I finally finished my house. Second day now, and I knew today was the day where I would go out and explore the maze. I ran straight in, knowing absolutely nothing. I had no idea what to expect. Although I did have some sort of idea that in the day, there would be no mobs. Only in the night would the mobs come out in the maze. If I was going to explore the maze, I would need to prepare a lot more before going exploring. And that includes gathering food, building a farm, and getting more resources. And there I was. I was back in the maze, ready to explore. While exploring the maze, I came up with a system. If there was a way I could still go that I haven't explored yet, I would place dirt. But if I ran into a dead end, I would completely block it off with cobblestone. This plan then obviously failed because the maze changes every night. So I'm a, I'm a dummy. I'm dumb. I'm smooth brain. Smooth brain Renny drag. But never mind about my stupid mistakes. I was still exploring the maze. And that's all that mattered. The real maze we made along the way. <laughs> the friends that we... Enough of me rambling on about stupid things. I had a maze to explore. After scouting out the maze for a while, I came back to make my house look a lot nicer. And after a while of doing so, I had succeeded. As you can see in my inventory, I upgraded to iron tools like this iron axe and gathered a lot more wood because you can never have too much wood. I then made this long path going from the door of the maze to the door of my house. Back in the maze now and I was determined to find something interesting. 
Realizing I needed a bigger food supply so I could explore the maze for longer, I went out and made a bigger farm. As I went over to check out Spawn, I noticed there was a villager. His name was Bruce, and he was willing to trade me chickens and bread. Thank you, Bruce. I then ran over to check the chest. To my surprise, it had been resupplied. I then took Bruce on a little adventure, and no, I am not kidnapping Bruce. I then made a nice little hut for Bruce where he could stay and, and do his trading. And there we go. I set up something simple and easy where I could trade with Bruce whenever I wanted. I realized my house wasn't big enough and I needed more storage. So I did the only logical thing and built a basement. Because why not? There was more room for me then in the actual house itself. I also went mining and built this entire mine for more resources like iron and coal. Back in the maze now for round three, and I was equipped this time with a shield and an iron sword. I was ready. Uh-oh. That's not good. So I was trapped in the maze, and it was nighttime, which meant there would be mobs. Mobs that were out to kill me. In a desperate attempt to survive, I cut cobwebs to get strings so I could get wool to make beds and try and sleep the night. But obviously that didn't work. I couldn't sleep the night. I was trapped. After running around like a headless chicken for ages, I finally found my way home. And then, I could finally leave. It was daytime. Thank goodness for that. Woo! If something like that were to happen again, I would need to be prepared. Which meant I was going to need more armor. Too bad I didn't have the resources for it. Which meant only one thing. Back into the maze to find more resources. Now, even though it was night again, I was more prepared. I knew what I was in for. And hey, I could even use this time to kill mobs to get more emeralds to trade with Bruce. So that's a plus. Now, most of the maze footage in this video is literally just me walking through a maze cluelessly, aimlessly, having no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing. So most of this video, I'll try not to show as much maze footage as I can just to save you guys some time. And as I ran around this corner, I noticed something. The eighth maze exit. I'd finally found something. There was only one thing to do now, and that was to explore it. Upon arriving, I realized straight away that this was the jungle. And to say the least, it was a pretty big jungle. I was going to need to do a lot of exploring. While exploring, I came across some very strong mobs. I found this chest, which had some very, very nice loot, including 34 iron, diamonds, golden apples, and a totem of dying. Nice. After exploring the 8th exit for a while, I knew it was time to go home because I was not strong enough to be dealing with this area. These mobs were very strong. After arriving home, the maze gave me another friend to trade emeralds with, and their name was Boris. The plan was to give Boris a trading hut just like Bruce. And Boris had some good deals. Emeralds for irons, watermelons, good stuff. Not to mention the chest had been refilled with lots of good loot like the sharpness to iron sword. And now using the diamonds I had previously gained, it was time to make diamond armor. Sweet, sweet diamond armor. Nice. All I was missing now was diamond boots, and that's why I went mining. After having no luck with the mining, I went back exploring in the maze, and to my surprise, I found exit three. And now with my diamond armor, this should be a lot easier. Not easy, but easier. Turns out that this exit consisted of a tropical ocean biome. While exploring exit three, I found this entrance with minecarts, rails, and redstone torches. And after being curious, wondering what this was, I realized it was a passage all the way back to my home. The tunnel led to a cave system, and the cave system led back to my home base, which was very nice. I could now use this as fast travel to get from the exit to my base. I then wanted to make the fast travel exit look nice, so I built a nice oak path, and I attempted, I tried my best, to make a stairway from the surface down into the fast travel tunnel, but it didn't really go to plan for a while. Eventually, I finally settled on a design I liked, and after finishing the stairway, it was time to set up the railway system. Now, the plan for the railway system was to go from the exit of the fast travel cave all the way to every individual exit of the maze. Well, hey, would you look at that? Another trader had just arrived, and their name was Joe. <laughs> Joe Ma Me and Joe were gonna get along just nicely. Just like the rest of the fellas, I made Joe a nice trading hut so I could easily trade with him. Back in the maze, now ready to adventure. And after exploring a while, I had found the sixth exit. Now here, 
There were a lot of mobs to deal with on the bridge. I had to get past them before I could even reach the main area. After reaching the main area, there was a mysterious lever, so I pulled it. I also noticed there was another fast travel tunnel and some nice free loot. Now, this area was very strange. I couldn't quite tell what it was supposed to be. There was just a lot of walls and big blocks of stone everywhere. I came around a corner and encountered these custom mobs with tridents and blocks on their head. They were also floating, which was quite bizarre. And that's when I stumbled across the first generator. In this area, there were 12 generators. In order for me to beat exit 6, I would need to find all 12 generators and open the door containing mysteries behind it. After realizing all that, I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task. Took me a while, but I had traversed the area far and wide and found each and every single one of these pesky generators. Along with some nice loot, so you can't complain. But finally, we had done it. We had beaten the first exit. Exit 6. More like exit sucks. Yeah. White wool. Monument completion block. That's what I like to hear. I was now confident in facing the other exits. So I took this piece of white wool, took it all the way home, and placed it on the monument. Nice. I grabbed some celebration melons and was ready to face the next exit. Back in exit 3 now and I was ready to discover what lied beneath the waves. Ooh. I stumbled across a giant ocean monument. And that's when I realized if I wanted to beat exit 3, I would need to kill the Elder Guardian. So I grabbed a lot of doors which allowed me to breathe in the ocean monument. And as you veterans probably know, it was easier using doors because the Elder Guardian gives you mining fatigue. While exploring the monument, I did come across some very nice loot. And after a while, I came across the big guy himself, the Elder Guardian. I was in deep trouble because I didn't have a lot of protection. It was a struggle to fight this big guy. But in the end, I eventually took them down. I then stumbled across the next piece of wool. Only problem was... I had mining fatigue, which meant I had to wait quite a bit before I could actually get inside of the chest. And then finally, the mining fatigue ran out and I could grab the cyan wool. Finally, another exit down. I raced straight back over to home and plopped the cyan wool onto the monument. I also quickly made an anvil, so if I needed to repair any tools, I could quickly do it. After more maze exploration, I made it to exit one. This exit had a back entrance that led me to the next area. The area that I was heading to now was a enclosed forest. A forest with dungeons. And this dungeon was filled with mobs, especially the weird ones, like endermite riding spiders. I've never seen that one before. Exploring the dungeons, there was some nice loot to take. This area was filled to the brim with mobs, but nothing I couldn't handle. All I needed to do was break the spawners and I was sorted. And before I knew it, I was already on my way to gaining the piece of wool. And just like that, I had arrived. I had acquired the green wool. It was easy as kick. I should have just come to exit one first. I then took the green wool all the way back and added it to the monument. Back at base now and I had a new trader and their name was Tobias. Tobias was offering me cow eggs so I could actually make a cow farm. I took Tobias and added them to the trader hut and then used the cow eggs that I bought to make a cow farm. I was ready to explore again, but I realized I needed a better weapon. So I used my trident and because I found a loyalty book earlier, I chucked loyalty onto the trident. I used other books like protection and chucked them on brand new chest plates. I did the same with my boots with feather falling three and protection three. I was now ready for a bigger challenge and a bigger challenge I got. Over at exit two, there was a hot air balloon and I wondered where it would take me. I set off on the hot air balloon and it took me to a giant air fortress. I ran straight into combat, ready to fight. I then ran into these custom mobs that had extreme knockback on their swords. It was absolute mayhem. There were skeletons shooting me with levitation Creepers blowing up and knockback skeletons hitting me across the room. I was taking my time room by room killing the mobs, ensuring that I was safe and wasn't going to fall off this giant sky base. There was also amazing loot scattered across this base. I was then accidentally shot by this skeleton across to a random chest filled with really good loot. The fact that I almost died turning into a good thing was very cool. I then carried on the search for this next piece of wool. I then reached the absolute tippity top of this build and to my surprise, there was nothing up here so I must have gone too high. 
I then found the actual entrance to this build and dropped down to find the next piece of wool. Woo! Let's go! You know the drill by now. I ran down to the monument and placed down the orange piece of wool. Back at home now. And to make my house look nicer, instead of having torches, I placed lanterns. I also did the same thing to the trading hut. After a while, I pushed further into the maze and found myself in another exit, where for some reason, the water was poisonous. At first seeing Endstone, I thought this exit was going to be themed on the end, but to my surprise, it was themed on sewage? I went to inspect this and I, I wasn't wrong. It was almost like an end swamp. And in this end swamp, there were ravines, and these ravines led to sewers. Navigating these sewers was really hard because even if you touched one drop of water, you were instantly poisoned. Not to mention the creepers everywhere. I finally reached the chest, just sitting there, waiting to be opened. And it was brown wool, quite fitting for the sewers. And then put that where it belonged. On to the next exit now, and it seemed as if it was a snowy, frosty exit. There were so many mobs on the way to the actual area itself that I fell off the bridge. Luckily, there was water. As I ran into the area, there were strays riding polar bears. One of the funniest mobs I've seen so far. <laughs> I was trying to push further into the ice caves while strays and polar bears were on my tail. It was a difficult task. And as I arrived at the top, there was a gang of strays, so I had to jump. And that's when I arrived at this giant ice castle. Definitely one of the best builds of this entire map. And while exploring the castle, there was some very nice loot, like this infinity book and two diamonds. I fought my way through more ice dungeons, killing strays and destroying stray spawners, eventually reaching my goal and claiming the blue wool, then making an absolute dash back for it home. Up next was exit four, the desert. Desert montage. So I had arrived at the desert and already it looked like it was gonna be harder than the other exits. I was gonna need to fight for my life inside of these desert temples. Good thing I previously found this bow because it was helping me out a lot. And also my trident was coming in handy because I had loyalty three on it. I noticed there was a spare enchanting table here. I grabbed it so that I could take it home. I then hunted down this glowing boss mob because I realized if I wanted the wall, I was going to need to kill it. The name of the boss was the Plague Bringer and it packed a punch. It was no match for me though. I was the Pain Bringer. Yeah. After defeating the Plague Bringer and escaping the temple, I found the chest all the way at the back containing the yellow wall. And I was chuffed to bits after this, another exit down. I put the enchanting table down I found earlier in my basement, making a nice enchanting table room. Now returning to the railway system I mentioned earlier in this video, you can then take this railway system to secret exits, if you will. This railway system took me to a pillager outpost biome, filled to the brim with pillagers and mobs out to kill me. Through these giant doors was the pillager base, and it was huge! I knew I needed to climb to the top and beat the wizard boss. Watch as I try and break the spawner and fail miserably, leaving me on half a heart. I had arrived at the top. It was time to summon the wicked wizard. This was it. This was the final boss of the 100 day challenge. And I gotta say, the wizard put up a fight. I almost died multiple times. I kept hitting them repeatedly with my trident, but every time, I kept getting lower and lower. To make things better, my helmet had just broken. It was now or never. I had to finish the fight. And as they hit the floor, I was in enough range to crit them. And I had done it. I'd beaten the wicked wizard. I grabbed the enchanted golden apple from the chest and clicked the button to release the spell. After releasing the spell, the cave opened up, showing me a way to the purple wall. I took the railway back went over to the monument and placed the purple wool. And that was it. That was 100 days inside of a giant maze. But this is far from over, my friends. If you want to see 200 days inside of a giant maze, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and comment what other 100 day videos would you like to see. And without further ado, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.